All right, so we've talked about building scenes with content and I've shown you what it looks like a couple of times to just drop in and play in the editor. But let's take a moment to get familiar with using this feature. Now, assuming you created your project with the third person starter template, you should be all set up with a default game mode that will let you play. Here in the template level, when you first open Unreal, you can go up here and click on this green play button to drop in and play an editor. The hotkey for that is Alt P and then escape to exit. Once you hit play, take note of this message that says click for mouse control. This means that to start playing, you need to click once in the viewport to go into game mode. You can then hit shift F1 to get your mouse cursor back. The messages in the upper left should remind you of this if you forget. Once you're playing, it's standard PC gaming controls. WASD to move, just like getting around the viewport in edit mode, and then spacebar to jump. Next, let's talk about eject and possess. When you're playing in editor, you could say run your character up here, hit shift F1 to get your mouse cursor back, then go up here and click on this eject button. This will eject you from the player so you can move around the scene just like in edit mode except the game world is still playing. Click the gamepad icon that it changed to in order to possess the character again. This can be really useful if you need to do something like, say, test out moving an object in the scene. Just eject, move the object, and then possess again. Note that when you exit play mode, this change will not be saved, so you'll need to repeat the action for real outside of play mode. Notice that when we hit play, we always start from the same position. This is controlled by an actor called player start, which looks like a flag with a gamepad icon. Wherever you place this actor in your scene is where you will start whenever you hit play. You can, however, go up here to the three dots menu and change your player start at location to current camera location. This will make it so that when you hit play, you'll drop in wherever you happen to currently be in the viewport. Being able to drop in and play is useful, but sometimes you just need to see some action that only works when the game is in play mode, but you don't need to actually run around with your character. You can do this with the simulate functionality. Going to the three dots again, you can see a list of options under modes. Selected viewport is what we have been using, and it's the one that you'll be using most of the time. Many of the others are special cases. The bottom option of simulate, though, can be very useful. It'll let you activate the game world without actually playing in it. Let's unpack a use case. Bring up the content browser and go to starter content particles folder. Find the P underscore explosion and drop it into your scene. Notice how when we dropped it in, it exploded once, but never again. This is because it is a one-time event, as you would expect an explosion to be, or at least you would hope it would be a one-time event, or maybe a no-time event. Now let's go up to the three dots and change our mode to simulate. Notice how when you change it, it immediately drops you in. If you hit escape, you'll see the play icon has changed to let you know that you are set to simulate mode. Now you can hit play to simulate all you want. Very useful for tweaking positions of one-time events like explosions. All right, now you should be better equipped to do some play testing in the editor. Later in the full course, we'll explore some of the other modes, including how to set up and use VR mode with your Oculus headset. See you next time.